Arrival really came about towards the end of 2005. I had remixed and recut drums on my first solo album, Symbolism. And Symbolism was actually a kind of a byproduct of the drum set Crash Course DVD. I needed to make an audio program to go along with that DVD of about 20 some songs in different styles and as it came up together we were writing all these different pieces and, and some of the pieces we really liked, especially some of the stuff that Rike Pantoja and, and I put together and we decided to make an album version of it and that really became the symbolism record and that happened in uh, like 2000, 2001 and it just sort of existed for a few years and the one thing about that record was I never felt like it was an album album, you know, like a, as a, a single thought um, and that's really the big problem <laughs> the music business nowadays is nobody makes albums anymore. You know, I know that firsthand from playing on a lot of pop and R&B singles and then and then the rest of the record is some producer programming in his bedroom. But anyway, I it didn't s seem like an album to me, a singularity uh, of thought, you know. And so I went back, I recut some stuff, we sonically made it kind of cohesive, and uh, it it came together more as more as a as a single album project. I began to think about that afterwards, and really focus on what it would take to make an album, a full album, that was one thought that had one focus and one kind of pinpointed uh, area of uh, focus musically. Through my travels, you know, I started to see all these different players playing all over the world and I would, I would be doing shows or clinics or whatever and, you know, noticing like all these great drummers all over the planet and I was like what really separates us all because a lot of us are doing the same thing and I really came to the conclusion that you know how we interpret Pulse how it gets interpreted through us and with our experiences and our facility on the instrument all of those things combined you know it really creates our personal voice. Well, Russ is a, is a great all-around musician he's a very very extremely musical and versatile drummer and arranger and writer he's, he's got a, many many different skills together. He's playing with him it's like you, you since I play percussion it's like sitting on I mean I have a great foundation so I really the groove is really strong it's big it's a big groove my interest became like how does a great experienced musician interpret things and how does it change because he's playing it. I thought what if we came up with a conceptual piece of music that had a lot of different guys interpreting Paul's, not just me, you know, not just my interpretation of it, but all of these other great players as well. I admire great actors. I try to approach it as a script and then interpret it and then bring a different character to that piece. That's where the idea came from, you know, a rhythmic conversation between two uh, instrumentalists who play drums and the first nine guys that I talked to were like, I, I want to do it, I'm in, you know, so it was really amazing for me, like, just, just to see how the guys were interested in doing it and excited about doing it, so, I, I mean, I got super pumped up about it and so the rhythmic conversations ended up just kind of sparking the ideas for the songs and it, it sort of had this this flow to it, this sort of organic flow of how the music was coming together and the pieces were coming together. And the biggest thing that has struck me about this is, uh, and, th and this has really been a joy, that everything takes time and it takes time to craft the whole feel, the whole contour of the, of the new arrangement as it were, you know, the, the, the way it's that, that it all takes shape. It became so big, so fast. That's where, you know, choosing a producer came into play. And, you know, Chaka Blackman, I had worked with Chaka on a lot of different projects, uh, different pop records and R&B records and rap records and stuff that he just hired me to play on. And, and I was just blown away at what Chaka was able to do with that material the scope of the material, how he made it all work together and sound like a singularity with different instrumentalists on it, different drummers, different players. Uh, when he told me 
uh, the musicians and the caliber of players that would be involved with this project, um, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> so, um, I was able to sit back and, and, and look at it and say, how do we approach this mm -hmm. um, with was a minimalist approach to it? You know right. I didn't have to do so much because in, in previous projects, you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of up and coming artists and, right. you know, there's a lot of development that, that goes into those artists to make them, you know, great artists. Right. But with these guys, they were already great artists in their own respect. You know, Russ is an extremely seasoned artist and right. every person who played on this record was is an extremely seasoned musician and artist in their own right. Pretty much every major recording that I've ever done, I've, I've had uh, Russ play on, so it was just natural. You know, the lineup of musicians was spectacular to say the least. I mean, you know, all these guys are friends of mine that I work with in other situations. And to see them all coming together on this project was just unbelievable. I mean, I kept pinching myself. There were sessions in, in Tokyo, Japan, and of course, tons of stuff here in, in RMI Studios in LA, and Paramount Studios, and you know, Studio Linden Oaks in New York, and we did stuff at Omega Studios in Paris. And I mean, it, we were all over the place trying to get this thing to work, and I mean, it was the only way to really make it happen with everybody's schedules. And I mean, everyone on the record is like stars in their own right, with their own albums and solo bands and working for other artists. How has Arrival changed me and what has it meant? I mean, this has been the biggest project, solo project, obviously, of my career. And uh, it's a new concept and we're trying something new. Um, the Behind the Glass package is a totally new idea of album production. Um, the interactive, behind the scenes kind of approach where you're playing the music along with the original recordings with the charts with demonstrations with lessons and examples and you know witnessing other guys do it and and seeing what's involved in the creation of a project like this and the magnitude of it and what's required from the musicians as players i hope that everyone enjoys it and has fun i have enjoyed it i have grown tremendously from doing it I have been humbled, I have laughed, I have cried <laughs> through it <laughs> with so much stuff that had to be done and it took three years of my life and uh, the birth of my first child happened in the middle of it, my daughter Josephine. I see it as a way of documenting artisans, that's what I think about when I see some of these guys play, it's like an opportunity to witness someone creating something. I would love to have great albums that I love and have the opportunity to play along and witness and, and have charts and all the things for those albums. I saw it as an opportunity to orchestrate this scenario. Not for the scenario to revolve around me and what I do, but for me to be a part of it and help orchestrate and arrange this scenario and allow everyone to create, be artists, and do what they do in the greatness that they do it in. I am very thankful to the Lord above for allowing it to happen in my life and for allowing all these great people and artists to be a part of it. So I've enjoyed it. I hope everyone else enjoys it.